So a guy finds a magic lamp. And he rubs the lamp. And all of a sudden, a genie pops out. The genie says to the guy, you get one wish, but there are three rules. I can't make anybody fall in love with you. I can't kill anybody. And I can't bring anybody back to life. The guy thinks about it for a second and says, I wish for envelopes to moan when you lick them. The genie says, there are four rules. <laughs> What up, YouTube? Let's hear. Thanks again for visiting the channel. As always, I appreciate it. Uh, if this is your first time to the channel, do me a favor. Just go ahead and hit that thumbs up button just for the algorithm. And if you'd be so kind, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to get off the table before I get started. Uh, I, I, miss, uh, I, I, I misspoke when I said the, uh, the Instagram account for the guy that gave me the, uh, the glitter dicks and the Hanks and the... Uh, stickers and patches and all that stuff. Um, so I gave you the wrong name. So if you'd be so kind as to go on to Instagram and follow EDC Snapper, uh, EDC underscore S-N-A-P-P-E-R, uh, he provided some stuff for the giveaway that's going to be coming up. So I'd appreciate it if you'd go on to Instagram and show him some love. Uh, also, I bought a coin from him, uh, and I meant to show it on that video, but I forgot. Uh, so you saw the sticker earlier. It says uh, it's a goose with a knife in its mouth. It says uh, peace was never an option. Uh, and I, th I just thought that was super cool in this coin here. Uh, so I went ahead and bought one from him uh, just also to help out with the uh, the fundraiser that they're doing as well. Uh, but it's got three eggplants on the opposite side. It's got the, uh, the serial number on it. Uh, and it says uh, E Pluribus Fashion fas Fashinium Unum. Uh, so I'm not sure what that says. I meant to look it up earlier, but I didn't. Uh, but on the opposite side, you've got the goose with the knife in its mouth. It says peace was never an option. It's just a very well-made coin. It's super, not heavy, but it's, it's you know, heavy-duty feeling. It's uh, good and sturdy, and it's a nice thick coin. Uh, it's an awesome coin. I really love this coin. And I'm a, I'm a big collector of coins. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. But the, another uh, aside from knives, I also like to collect coins. Uh, another thing that I got... Um, I was talking before about a knife that I really wanted, but I couldn't afford it. Uh, had an orange handle on it, uh, but uh, this one does not. Uh, so I, I really wanted to buy this knife. The guy decided to hold on to it for me until I could afford it, which I'm, I'm really appreciative of him for that. So I'm sure most of you know what this is, but this is the uh, ASK, American Service Knife from Medford Knife and Tool. Uh, and this, I believe, is the Jefferson. Uh, it's got three, or three tools on it. Um, uh, which have multiple uses uh, for these two, but uh, obviously you've just got the knife on it, which is really, really well made. I believe this is S45VN, but it doesn't say anywhere on here what the blade steel is. Uh, I will say that it came from the factory pretty dull, um, but that's not really you know out of the ordinary for multi-tools or however you want to call this, slip joint multi-tools. Uh, it's also got a, uh, <clears throat> a chisel ground uh, scraper, uh, a hex driver, um, and you can also use this as a pry bar. Uh, and then on the other side here, you've got a, uh, a small Phillips head screwdriver and uh, a bottle opener as well. Uh, and if you'll notice the way this is made, uh, it's kind of made so that the, uh, the main pressure point of the screwdriver is set up above the pivot. So, you know, you don't have to worry about while you're pushing about the, the, the tool itself like slipping down. Uh, when it's set up high like this, when you're pushing, it's actually pushing further into the into the pivot. So you're going to be pushing up instead of down, which is a really cool aspect of this tool. Uh, the scales are still plastic, uh, but they've got this laminate coating on it that makes it look like wood. Uh, and you've got uh, T25 screws here to go ahead and disassemble it. Uh, this is a modular tool that you can add to or take away from. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of tools that they have as well that you can add to this if you want to. Uh, it's a little bit pricey. I think they start at like $250 ish, uh, which is expensive. But again, it's it's modular and you you know without any effort whatsoever, you can take this apart, add stuff to it, and put it back together. It's it's not it's nowhere near as difficult to take apart as a Swiss Army knife is. You guys know those are riveted together, so you have to actually send those out to have a professional add to it if you want to or customize it. Uh, but this is just a really awesome tool. And I've, I've wanted one since they came out with these, but and I wanted the Jefferson. Uh, but the Jefferson only comes with orange scales, so I wasn't going to buy one. 
uh, and then buy extra scales for it just to have an extra set of scales that I was never going to use. Uh, so I'm really happy to have this guy. I'll do a full review on it um, sometime here in the next couple of weeks. I've been using it for a little while, and it's, it's so far it's, it's fantastic. I can't find anything wrong with it at all, other than the fact that it wasn't very sharp out of the box. But uh, it, it sharpened up very, very easily for me, and I'm not a professional sharper, sharpener or anything like that. Uh, but it was very easy to sharpen and it's got a really good knife on it. I mean, this is a, a pretty close to a three inch blade, I think. Yeah, it's a, two, uh, it's about a 2.75 inch blade on this guy. So that's a pretty decent sized blade, especially considering the size of the handle. Uh, so this is a really cool little slip joint. This is actually the first slip joint that I've ever bought. Uh, I have a couple, um, both of them are given to me by my grandfather. Uh, so anyway, we are going to be doing a quick review today of my uh, my Nimble X. So let's do it up. Oh, God, I suck. Okay, one more time. All right, there we go. Uh, so for starters, we'll go with uh, measurements. Uh, this is an 8-inch knife overall uh, with a 3.5-inch blade on it, 3.15-inch uh, cutting edge, and a 4.5-inch handle. Uh, the uh, size comparison we're going to be doing, uh, sorry, well, up a, compared to the uh, the Rat Model 1, I'm stumbling all over my words today, I'm not sure why. Uh, the Rat 1 obviously is going to be a little bit bigger than the uh, Nibble X, and the Rat Model 2 obviously is going to be a little bit smaller. The uh, Demco knives, Demco 8020S, is going to be just a little bit bigger than this knife. And the 20.5 is going to be just a little bit smaller than this knife. Last but not least, compared to the Spyderco knives, you've got the uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2, which is going to be just a hair bigger than this guy. And you've got the Para 3, which is obviously going to be just a little bit smaller than this knife. Carry profile. Let's get these guys closed real quick. Make sure that's lined up good. All right. As you can see, it's going to be just a little bit smaller than the Paramilitary Tree. Paramilitary Tree. Paramilitary 2, and it's just a little bit bigger than the paramil three, Paramilitary 3, the Para 3 when they're closed. I'm sorry for stumbling all over my words today, guys. I don't know what the hell's going on with me. Must be having a stroke or something. Uh, thickness, uh, this is just about the exact same thickness as the Para 3. Uh, and as far as height is concerned, it's nowhere near as tall as the para, as the Para 3 is. So it doesn't take up a whole hell of a lot of room in the pocket. It's very comfortable to use, and it's very easy to open, close, all that good stuff. Um, the uh, the blade stock thickness on this guy, let me take a look here. Make sure this guy is zeroed out. Okay. Forgive the way my hands look, guys. I was outside grilling uh, today, so I wasn't able to get all the charcoal off my hands uh, as much as I wanted to. 142 thousandths for blade stock thickness on this guy. And let's get a quick weight. This guy turned on. Okay. So we are looking at four and a half ounces even. One more time. Yeah, four and a half ounces. That's fantastic. All right. So uh, first things first, see if I can figure out how to open the goddamn thing. So... <laughs> Uh, so this knife uh, opens primarily, I think, for the, you know, their uh, intended use was for this to be a flipper, uh, but it opens with a flipper. Uh, it also opens with the fuller here. You can flick that open. You can use your thumb to open it. Very easy to do. And then you can also use the front flipper, which I'm not very good at front flippers. You guys know that, but I'm actually doing pretty good with this one. It's not too bad as long as I can keep my finger off the lock bar. Uh, one of the issues with this knife is you got to keep your finger off the lock bar, otherwise it'll it'll lock you up pretty good. Uh, so anyway, uh, this blade that we're looking at it's an M390 blade, uh, which is a uh, it's a satin grind, and it, it has a very very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's a very subtle hollow grind. It's you can barely even tell that it's hollow ground, but if you hold a ruler up to the edge here, you'll see just a little bit of space there. Uh, so it definitely is a hollow ground blade. Uh, you've got a fuller that carries out all the way to the tip of the blade here with an opening hole right towards the end there. Uh, and I don't know if you'd call this a flat or not. It's just the same part of the blade without the fuller ground out. 
Uh, there is a whole bunch of jimping all over the top of this, uh, the spine of this blade, which is fantastic. Uh, no matter where you end up having to put your thumb, it's very, very comfortable to be able to do that. Uh, there's no blade play up, right, left, or down. And the balance on this knife is uh, right behind the pivot, right where you want it. So that's fantastic. Uh, you've got a very generous forward finger choil here. Uh, and this is just a plain ground blade uh, with a little bit of belly to it and a, a good uh, acute piercing tip. I'm going to call this a sheep's foot blade. Uh, some people may or may not call this like a drop point or uh, maybe a modified Warncliffe, uh, but it looks like a sheep's foot to me, so that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, that forward finger choil, as I said, is very, very comfortable, um, very easy to choke up on, and you can get access to that jimping, like I said, no matter where you end up putting your thumb. Uh, this guy's running on bearings. Uh, and this is a, uh, a titanium frame lock knife. You can see that on the back here. Uh, the scales are full milled titanium, uh, and they do have some milling on the inside there, just a little bit, not a whole lot, but enough to make it lighter. Uh, and we have a milled titanium pocket clip as well. All the hardware is anodized the same color as the pocket clip and the backspacer. And all of the hardware on this guy is T8 hardware. You've also got a lanyard hole milled into the back of the knife here. And you've got the titanium backspacer there, which has also been anodized the same color as the hardware. The only issue that I have with this knife is, and it's not even really an issue. It's, it's just kind of, uh, I don't know, it just kind of irks me a little bit. Um, there, this blade is completely sterile. Uh, the knife itself is completely sterile. You've got the logo for EMP EDC here on the pivot, which is great. I love it when they put their logos on the pivots. But you've got the serial numbers or the, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers for the knife up here on the backspacer on the outside. Uh, the only reason that's bugging me a little bit is, you know, it could have just as easily gone on the inside. Uh, Arcane Design does that. There's a few uh, makers that put their you know, the, the numbers of the serial numbers of the knife on the inside of the backspacer there. So you can't see it from the outside. If the blade had said like M390 on it or something like that, that, that would be fine, but there's nothing at all on the blade and there's nothing at all on the handle. Uh, so the only thing written on the outside here is the serial number for the knife, which it just kind of just bugs me a little bit. That's not the end of the world. doesn't hurt anything. I just wish it was on the inside of the, the backspacer. That's all. It's very easy to take apart. I did have to end up taking it apart because uh, there wasn't it wasn't centered very well, but it is centered perfectly fine now, as you can see. I'll go ahead and tip that up for you so that you can see the centering on that guy. And the lockup on this guy is fantastic as well. It's about uh, 25, uh, sorry, around 50%. You can't really see it when it's open, and it's kind of hard to see when it's closed. I don't know if you guys can see down in there or not, but you can see right there on the lock face where the... Uh, the lock bar interacts with the lock face and it locks up at about 45 or 50%, which is fantastic. Uh, I do love the way they have this knife set up so that you can do the, the flipper uh, or you can use the, the front flipper there as well. Um, like I said, I'm not very good at front flippers, so I have a little bit of trouble with it. And you can also use that thumb hole or middle finger hole to open the knife as well. So there's a whole bunch of opening options, a whole bunch of deployment options on this knife. And I absolutely, absolutely love that. It's a great, great knife. Very, very, very comfortable. Uh, ergonomics on this guy are fantastic. Uh, as I said, you can just do the standard hammer grip or you can choke up on it a little bit. And uh, just no issues there whatsoever. This is one of the most comfortable knives I've held in a really, really long time. And I love the way that this blade is shaped. Uh, you can do a, a stand, you know, a, a nice pinch grip on it, uh, or you can just hold it in the normal, uh, the normal grip. Uh, and you've got plenty of control on this knife, uh, no matter how you're holding it. I wouldn't suggest that you choke back on it at all. The handle is a little bit too uh, slim for that. But I don't know why you would try to be doing the light, light chopping or anything like that with this knife. It's not really, that's not kind of, not really what this knife was made for. As you can see, the deployment is easy. The uh, disengagement is no problem whatsoever. Uh, and the ergonomics on this guy, as I said, are fantastic. I've already gone over the jimping. Uh, the detent on this knife is, is very, very, done very well uh, as well. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. 
Uh, I will say though, just the only issue that you're going to have is if you if you don't aren't cognizant of where your fingers are on that lock bar. If you end up with your fingers on the lock bar, it is going to stop the blade from deploying. I've wanted one of these knives for such a long time. When the uh, the standard nimble came out, it was a little too small for my hand, so I did not go for that. And then when they released the nimble X, uh, I kind of missed the first drop, so I had to wait for a while before they dropped the next uh, the next batch of nimble Xs. Uh, another kind of just nitpick with me is it's called the Nimble X, and that's because it's the considering it an extra large knife, but it's not an extra large knife. I would say that this is a, a full size knife for sure. It's at eight inches. It's got a three and a half inch blade. You know, it's not a problem at all with the size of the blade. It's just having the the X added on to it. I understand that the standard Nimble is much smaller. But this is definitely not an, an extra large knife. It's a standard, it's a, a full size knife for sure. People with normal size hands will not have any problems with this knife at all. It'll be very, very comfortable and they may even consider it like to be a, a larger knife. But to me, this is just a standard size knife or, or a full size knife. It's not too small for my hand or anything like that. But if it was any smaller, it probably would be. So I was a little bit disappointed just because, you know, I knew the measurements before I got it. I knew what I was buying and I knew it was going to be a little smaller than what I'm used to. Uh, just the way that it feels in the hand as, you know, although it is very, very comfortable, I just kind of want a little bit more back here. Uh, that's all. Uh, you know, it's like I said, it's nothing bad. There's nothing wrong with the knife at all. I absolutely love this knife and I'll never get rid of it. Um, you know, mostly just because the aesthetics of the knife and the way it fits in my hand, very, very comfortable. I just kind of want it to be a little bit bigger, but that's not a big deal. It doesn't hurt anything with the knife at all. Uh, again, uh, this is M390. So we'll talk about that for just a second as I try to do. Uh, so M390 uh, is from Bowler. Uh, Bowler M390, also called MicroClean. Uh, third generation powder metallurgy technology steel developed for knife blades requiring good corrosion resistance and very high hardness for excellent wear resistance. Chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, and tungsten are added for excellent sharpness and edge retention, and it can be polished to an extremely high finish, uh, which I can, I mean, just looking at the finish on this blade, I don't know if this is like blasted or what kind of finish is on this blade, but it's absolutely beautiful. It almost looks like it's got clear Cerakote on it, really. I mean, it's so, so smooth. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how they finish this blade, but I absolutely love the finish on this blade for sure. Um, uh, the, um, the HRC for this knife, uh, the standard uh, optimum range is 60 to 62 HRC. Uh, and it best the, where it best balances edge holding and toughness due to its alloys due to its alloying concept the steel offers extremely high wear resistance and corrosion resistance as well as far as the chemical makeup of this seal is concerned you've got carbon at 1.9 percent chromium at 20 percent stainless steel begins at 12 percent chromium so at 20 percent that's fantastic vanadium is four percent molybdenum is one percent silicon is 0.7 tungsten is 0.6 and manganese is 0.3 the typical typical applications for this particular steel are uh, plastic injection molds food processing equipment kitchen cutlery and high-end production and custom knives uh, so that's the steel in a nutshell uh, I don't really think that there's anything else to say about this particular knife, guys, but uh, there was a couple of other things I wanted to say. Um, as I said, the, the giveaway is going to be coming up in a week or two here. As soon as I get the stickers, I'll let you guys know, and we'll do a couple of videos to do that giveaway. And also, I have a, a new phone coming, um, which I'm just going to be using for my recordings. It's a uh, the Google um, Pixel 6a, which is supposed to be like this, the second best phone camera that you can buy right now. So hopefully that will increase the uh, picture quality of my videos. Uh, and I don't know how the sound's going to work out, but we'll see how that works. If I need to do something to tweak the sound as well, I will do that as well. Uh, but I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And stay up, y'all. Take it easy. Bye.